Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. So this is our fifth gameplay demo segment, and this one's really focused on applying damage, critical hits, all that good stuff. So when you take damage, obviously you need to record it on your mech's record sheet. There are three main sections here that uh, we'll be looking at. So the first is in the top right, uh, that's the big large armor diagram. Right, it's got all the dots there representing the amount of damage the mech can take in a given location. Below that is the internal structure. So once you exhaust your external armor, damage starts to bleed into the internal structure. You can start taking critical hits, and that's when things can get bad. Um, but whenever you take damage, the first thing you want to do after the location is determined is you want to see if there are armor points left on that location. So for example, Let's say the Centurion attacks the Jenner and hits the left arm of the Jenner with a medium laser. Now a medium laser does five points of damage, and the Jenner's arm, let's say the Jenner's been uh, untouched at this point in the game, so by default the Jenner has four points of armor on its left arm. So since the medium laser does five damage, we mark off all four points of damage, and then we go down to the internal structure and we mark off one point of damage in the internal structure. So that totals five points of damage. So at that point, that hit, because it went into the internal structure, would generate a chance for a critical hit. We'll talk about critical hits in a little bit. Now let's talk about damage transfer. So let's say you take enough damage that there isn't uh, a substantial amount of armor and internal structure combined to sustain all of the damage. Um, so in our example, the Jenner's already taking five damage to its left arm. Uh, let's say it takes an auto cannon ten shot to that same arm. Right, so that deals ten points of damage. And if we look at the internal structure diagram of the Jenner, we've only seen it's got five points left. So what happens? So we automatically mark off those five points of damage, and we do have a chance at this point. To roll for a critical hit. Now because there really isn't anything uh, left in that arm in terms of ammunition or anything that can cause catastrophic death of the mech, we don't even bother. We just mark the arm as destroyed and then that damage will transfer inward. So the next five points of damage, because remember we did 10 damage from the AC-10, five of it was taken up by that left, uh, that left arm internal structure. The next five points of damage will all go to the left torso. So damage always transfers inward. The arms go to the side torsos, the legs transfer into the respective side torso, the side torsos transfer into the center torso. If the center torso or head are destroyed, the mech is destroyed as well. Uh, so what happens though when you destroy a side torso and you deal no damage to the arm at all? So let's say, uh, for example, uh, we managed to hit that Jenner in the right torso with not only an auto cannon 10, but also a couple salvos of LRM-5 uh, missiles. So we deal, let's say, a total of uh, 20 damage uh, to the to the Jenner. Okay, so what would happen then? So we hit the right torso with everything. Uh, we start by marking off 10 damage on the external armor, right, the top diagram there. So we only have 8 pips to fill in. That means two points are going to automatically roll over into the internal structure. That's going to generate a critical hit. The next five points of damage get applied to the internal structure. That's also going to generate a critical hit. Now the final five points of damage, you notice we only have one pip left here. So we're going to mark that off. And then the remaining four points of damage transfer inward to the center torso. Note that it transfers to the armor not the internal structure, right? So you always transfer inward, but you start with the armor and then work your way back into the internal structure. If the center torso had no armor left, it would just go to the internal structure as normal. So one important thing that, uh, that that's important to note, and I could be playing this wrong, so note in the comments if I am, but based on what I read in the rule book, that rear armor on the right torso in this scenario would still be intact. So if later in the game that Jenner gets shot in the back and that right side, it would still have armor there to absorb some of the impact, but as soon as that external armor is expended, it would immediately go 
to the internal center torso, right? Because there's nothing left on that internal right side. So hopefully that makes sense. And now that that side torso has been destroyed, that right torso is totally destroyed, right? All of the internal damage has been taken. No more external armor except for on the rear. Um, but because that internal structure has been knocked out, the right arm just falls off of the mech. It hasn't taken any damage, but everything is considered destroyed. Um, so any weapons mounted on that arm, gone, right? The mech can't punch anything. Uh, that, that arm is just considered destroyed and actually falls into the hex um, or the location where that arm was destroyed, right? Uh, later on, uh, other mechs can come by and pick up that arm and whack another mech over the head with it or something like that. So uh, fun to keep track of where those arms fall off. Um, that is not the scenario if the arm is uh, completely slagged, but in this case, again, the arm's just, it's, it's treated as if it's blown clean off. Um, and so that's a, that's a sort of side effect of losing a side torso. And note that it's not the same for a leg. If you destroy a side torso, like a right torso, the right leg is still intact, right? There's no uh, additional effects to that right leg. So that's the general gist of damage transfer. So let's talk about critical hits now. So in our last example, the Centurion hit with three different weapons. All three of those weapons dealt damage to the internal structure. So anytime a single weapon or a cluster deals damage to internal structure, that generates that chance for a critical hit. So, you know, if you hit with five small lasers and all five of them you know, deal a, an internal hit, you know, you're going to get five potential chances for a critical hit. If you hit with a single AC-20, even though it's doing more damage, it's still only going to be one a chance for a critical hit. So that's an interesting trade-off uh, to note there. Um, so when you roll for a critical hit, by rule, you're supposed to do it as soon as the damage resolves for that specific weapon. So really, it's like you roll to hit with the weapon, you roll for the location, you deal the damage, you check for a critical hit, you roll for the critical hit. When you're dealing with arms and legs, this is important uh, because there's three types of critical hits. Um, so if you roll an eight or a nine, you generate one chance for, you actually get one critical hit. If you roll a 10 or 11, it's two critical hits. If you roll a 12, it's three critical hits or the location is blown off in the case of a head, an arm, or a leg. So if you deal, for example, one point of damage to the internal structure of an arm, okay, and you roll a 12, that arm is gone. So any remaining hits to that arm would automatically then transfer to that left torso. So it's important to kind of roll for those crits as they come up. Most people, when they're playing, they're just going to roll all their damage up. They're going to mark it and then do critical hits after. Um, but it is important when you're hitting a limb to always check because that damage could end up transferring inward, um, you know, further damaging your, your target. So how do critical hits actually work? So at the bottom of the mech's record sheet, there's a large section, um, and it has basically tables of potential critical hits. And these are generally similar for most mechs, but are customized based on the equipment that the mech has. Um, and so what you'll see is some locations have two sections, right? It'll have a big number, one to three, four to six, um, and then, you know, a bunch of inner numbers, one through six, one through six. So what you typically supposed to do, let's say we're working with the right torso. The first thing is to make sure you're rolling on the right section of the mech. So you find the right torso, right? And you'll notice on the Jenner here, it's got the one to three and the four to six outer numbers, but in the four to six, there's nothing but roll again. So we're not even going to bother rolling two dice. Now, if it had a whole bunch of crits filled out in both, both subsections there, you would roll 1d6 first to determine, so one six-sided die, to determine which table you're rolling on, the top one or the bottom one. If you get a 1 to 3, you're rolling on the top one. 4 to 6, you're rolling on the bottom one. You roll a second six-sided die then, and you basically find the number. So if I roll a 3 and another 3, I've hit the ammo. But let's say for now I hit uh, the jump jet. Uh, so I roll. A, let's say I roll a, a 3 and then a 2. So first three, you know, would put me on the top table. The two would hit me on the jump jet. Again, in this scenario, because there's nothing in that bottom table, I really only need to roll one six-sided die, right? Because the bottom tables all roll again anyway. Uh, one other important note, if both sections were populated and I did still hit a roll again uh, location, you roll both the outer and the inner die again. So 
um, you know, let's say the Jenner had, you know, the first six populated and then one, two, and three populated on the bottom table there, and I rolled a four to start and then a six, and I hit the roll again, I would have to roll both of those dice again to determine. Hopefully that makes sense. So in this scenario, right, I, I hit a jump jet, so you just simply mark it, you scratch it off there. Um, that, that location then for the rest of the game counts as a roll again. So if I happen to roll that exact spot on the critical hit table, it would count as a roll again. I would need to roll something else. In the scenario that a mech starts the phase with no available critical hit slots in a specific section, and some mechs, it is just all roll agains because they got literally nothing in their torso, um, or they only have one, you know, one slot, and let's say it gets taken out. So if there's nothing there, at the, again, at the beginning of the turn, this is important, and you generate a critical hit on that spot, that critical hit will automatically transfer inward. So let's say, in this scenario with the Jenner, all three of my critical slots were destroyed, everything's a roll again, and then I roll an additional critical hit on the right torso the, the subsequent turn. That critical hit would then apply to the center torso. Okay, so let's talk about the CT, because this is where all the big stuff is. Uh, most of the time, especially in the Succession Wars era, you're going to see a very similar distribution of engine and gyros across both of those top and bottom tables in the center torso. Uh, engine hits and gyro critical hits uh, affect the mech in a very, um, very special way, uh, and special is not good, uh, really messes the mech up. Um, and so if the mech sustains three engine critical hits, it's destroyed. And you can see here there's a, there's a spot where you can mark off your engine critical hits. If the mech sustains two gyro critical hits, it's not destroyed, um, unless you're playing with certain forced withdrawal rules that can lead to a mech being destroyed or basically being crippled to the point where it's useless. Um, but a mech without a gyro that still has legs and all this other stuff, I mean, it can still function. Um, it just, uh, it's just not functioning very well. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other critical hits, right? Actuators, sensors, life support. These things don't destroy the mech. They just hamper its ability to uh, to contribute to the fight. And all of those rules, again, in the rule book. Uh, and they're, they're quite extensive, so we're not going to go over them here. Um, but uh, all of those are, are marked here. Now, you'll notice for actuators, typically um, everything's got hip, upper, lower, foot on the leg. Um, on the arms, though... Um, not everything has upper, lower, and hand actuators. Um, so some mechs like the Jenner, just a shoulder and an upper arm actuator. Um, you know, other mechs all the way down where they have a hand. And, and that's important because, uh, for example, like if you're clubbing a mech or, um, you know, picking things up, you know, they can only do that if they have a hand actuator. Um, and likewise, if they're flipping their arms, they can only do that if they do not have certain actuators, uh, like a lower and a hand actuator. So... Uh, what actuators the mech has is important um, to leveraging certain special rules and, and uh, special maneuvers and things like that and attacks. Um, so anyway, we, di we, we sort of digressed a little bit off of critical hits, um, but this is really how you use the critical hit table. Um, it tells you, you know, actuators that are equipped on the mech, um, but also it's there primarily to mark off um, when things are destroyed. So one other critical hit we'll talk about is, is the, uh, the dreaded ammo critical. So the ammo um, on the Jenner uh, is in that right torso, and you can see it has a number of rounds indicated. Uh, so it says, uh, you know, ammo SRM-4-25. That's what it starts with. So as you progress through the game, as we talked about in, in the shooting video, you should be marking off the ammo that you're using. When ammo detonates, it automatically starts dealing damage based on how many rounds are left, the damage per round, and then, you know, the shots that, that the weapon fires. So in this case, if it had a full ammo bin, that SRM-4 ammo is going to do 25 times 4. And then remember, SRMs are 2 damage per missile. So do that math. It's 200 damage. It's a lot. Uh, so it's obviously going to take the Jenner out of commission. No ifs, ands, or buts. What's going to happen, though, which what is important, typically when you have bigger mechs or, or very low number of ammo rounds left, um, that damage never, ever goes to your armor. Always transfers inward and via the internal structure only. So if the Jenner, let's say, had you know uh, one round of SRM-4 ammo left and it takes eight damage, 
you know, it would start marking off damage in that right torso, and anything left over would go right to the center torso internal structure, regardless of how much of its uh, external or exterior armor uh, was still intact. Okay, so I think that covers everything on critical hits. Um, I think that covers pretty much everything on damage, just the basics here. Of course, subscribe to our channel, uh, check out our battle reports, check out some of our other how to play videos. And if you have any questions at all, uh, of course, post them up. All right, well, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more from Death From Above Wargaming.